So in this video, we're going to be looking at the theory behind the enthalpy of neutralization. And here is our syllabus dot point. So we should know now that a neutralization reaction is an exothermic type reaction. And so it, exothermic means that there's more energy being released than being absorbed when the acid reacts with the base. We can also tell that this is going to be an exothermic type reaction if we look at these graphs. We also know that this is going to be an exothermic type reaction if we look on the graph. So we can tell that the product here is going to have less energy than the reactants started with. Also, as a reminder, remember that it may seem kind of counterintuitive, but actually, as the bond breaks, it's going to absorb energy, since energy is required to break the bond, and then forming the bond is what's going to be releasing energy. So in this case, the formation of the bonds is going to be releasing more energy than the breaking of the bonds, which absorbs energy. So a neutralization reaction involving both a strong acid and a strong base is going to have the same molar enthalpy of reaction, and this is actually quite important for us to try to remember. Now the reason for this is because both strong acids and strong bases will fully ionize, which will leave the hydroxide and the hydrogen ions in the solution, and so they're going to have the exact same net ionic equation when we have a reaction between a strong acid and a strong base, which is H plus plus OH minus is going to form H2O and you have a delta H of negative 51 kilojoules per mole. So neutralization reactions are going to require H plus or a proton to be donated from an acid. The ionization of weak acid and weak base thus are going to have different delta H values. So earlier we said that a strong acid and a strong base neutralization reaction will all have the same delta H values because they are both fully deionizing but in this case, we've got weak acid and weak base, which are not fully deionizing. So we're going to have different delta H values. And really, the delta H value is going to depend on how much or to what degree of ionization that weak acid or base is going to have. So if we're looking at this, the net ionic equation of a neutralization is different for a strong acid and a strong base. So we got a reaction between this acid here. This is acetic acid with OH- minus, our hydroxide ion. This is forming water and the acetate ion. But remember, because this is a weak acid reaction, we are going to be in equilibrium, or this is reversible. And we have a delta H, which is minus 56.1, less than the one that we had earlier between the strong acid and the strong base. So the enthalpy of neutralization, which by now we've discussed, is going to be the energy which is going to be either released or absorbed from a neutralization reaction, can be measured using a particular type of equation. So energy produced by neutralization is absorbed by a solution. So the neutralization is going to produce a salt solution. So if we reacted the HCl with the NaOH earlier, we got the formation of an ACL salt in water. And all of that energy that's produced from the neutralization is going to be absorbed by that solution, which means that the temperature of the solution is going to increase. And a change of temperature, delta T, can help us to work out Q, which is the quantity of heat, it's the amount of energy absorbed by solution in joules, which is our uniform energy, M, which is the mass of the final solution. So that's the solution of the salt, the NaCl and water solution that's formed from that HCl and NaOH. Different salts solutions for different types of neutralization reactions. And then C is a specific heat capacity of the solution. And we'll go into more detail about what this letter C is. So the specific heat capacity of a solution is the amount of energy which is required to raise that temperature of the particular substance by one Kelvin per unit mass. So let's just think about water, for example. So if I took some water and I wanted to heat it up, for one kilogram to increase its temperature by one Kelvin, I'm going to need 4.1 times 10 to the three joules of energy. So 4,180 joules of energy is required to raise that temperature of one kilogram of water by one degrees. And this is actually quite a large number, which is why when we're talking about something like the ocean changing temperature, going up by 0 0.5 degrees, going up by 1 degree, that's actually quite a significant change. NaCl has a specific heat capacity of 880 joules per kilogram per Kelvin, which means that if I wanted to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of NaCl, 1 Kelvin, 
I'm going to need 880 joules. So it's actually much easier to raise the temperature of NaCl, which means that NaCl will have a different C value than pure water. And the value is going to depend on the concentration of NaCl in our solution when we form it in our neutralization reaction. So while we talked earlier about Q being the quantity of heat that's being produced, we also use the notation delta H, which we are quite familiar, or we should be quite familiar with at the moment. So delta H is the energy absorbed or produced by a reaction per mole, and we call this the molar enthalpy of neutralization, as is in the title. So what does that mean? Well, if we look at this reaction, we have H plus plus OH minus is forming H2O, and the delta H is negative 57.1 kilojoules per mole. This is the molar enthalpy of the formation of water, which means that when we are forming water, 57.1 kilojoules is going to be produced. So if we have more H2O being formed, then there is going to be more energy that is produced. Going back to Q, we can now use our understanding of the relationship between delta H as the molar enthalpy of neutralization to recognize that Q is simply just delta H or negative delta H multiplied by the number of moles of water. The formula for Q is going to be negative because the quantity of heat for an exothermic reaction is a positive amount. If I'm heating something up, there's a positive amount of heat which is being created. However, delta H is negative when you're having an increase in temperature because the negative is indicating that it's exothermic. That's why we have to put a negative in front of the delta H when we're multiplying it by the number of moles of water in order to get our quantity of heat. So remember, Q is positive. The amount of heat that's absorbed by a solution is a positive amount, although the delta H is negative because it's exothermic. Here we can look at an example of how this is going to work. So I have the formation of water here, H2O, and we have a delta H, a molar enthalpy of neutralization, negative 51.7 kilojoules per mole. And so we're going to say, for example, two moles of H2O are formed. Well, N is going to be 2. Negative delta H is going to be the negative of the negative 57.1 kilojoules per mole. And when we multiply this together, we're going to get 114.2 kilojoules of energy absorbed by the solution. That's our quantity of heat. So doing this neutralization reaction, we should expect we're heating up the solution. If we're heating up the solution, then the quantity of heat should be positive. That's why we get a positive amount. If we didn't have this negative, we'd have a negative amount, and this wouldn't really make sense. You have a negative amount of heat, even though your solution is getting hotter.